Thanks for listening to Entree Nido, the show where we interview neat people with neat stories to help you live your Nido life. Our goal is simple. It's to inspire, challenge, and empower you to achieve more in life. Whether you're considering the leap from your nine to five, creating side hustles, or becoming the best version of you, you've come to the right place and we're glad you're here. So let's get started. Welcome back to Entree Nido. This is Matt Neff, host of Entree Nido. Thank you so much for listening today. For today's show, we talk about the power of your vision story with business coach Scott Beebe. Scott is a business coach, trainer, and strategist. He liberates small business owners from the chaos of working in their business and enjoy the freedom of working on their business. On today's show, you'll hear brilliant content on the power of your vision story. I've never heard such a simple yet profound talk on vision before, and I know you'll love it. For more information on Scott and his work, check out mybusinessonpurpose.com. That's mybusinessonpurpose.com. I also want to take a quick second to mention a great new book I'm reading called The Road Back to You by Ian Morgan Cron. Funny and filled with stories, this book allows you to understand more about each of the Enneagram types, keeping you from pausing long after you've heard the chapter about yourself. Beginning with changes you can start making today, the wisdom of the Enneagram can help you get on the road that will take you further along into who you really are, leading you into places of spiritual discovery you have never found on your own and paving the way to the wiser, more compassionate person you want to become. As a thank you for listening to the show, you can get this book for free by going to entrenita.com and clicking on the free book tab at the top of the screen. We will also include a hyperlink on today's show notes. So that is all I have for today. Thank you so much for listening. We would love it if you would comment, rate, and subscribe, reach out to us on social media. And if this episode's helped you today, consider sharing it with your friends on social media. So without further ado, we give you Scott Beebe and the power of your vision story. Welcome back to Entre Nito. My guest today is Scott Beebe. Scott, welcome to the show. Matt, thanks for having me, man. I love the name Entre Nito, so we're going to try to make this neat. Uh, <laughs> I even love that word. It's kind of a quirky, nerdy word, but yes. it's fun to use. So are, thanks for it. letting me, give me an excuse to use it. Yes, thank you. Thank you for saying it's quirky and nerdy because that's exactly <laughs> what I was going for. Uh, a quick backstory with, with Aaron Walker, uh, our mutual friend. It was so funny because like, I didn't know what I want to call the podcast. This is like behind the scenes. And I was like, I love Dave Ramsey stuff. And I was like, well, he's got entree leadership and it's like entrepreneurs, things like that. But I like, I need a quirky word. I need something that kind of like sticks out or a catchphrase or whatever, helping people live the neato life is our goal. And, uh, I, Mr. Walker sits down next to me at a podcast, uh, movement in uh, Anaheim. And I, I'm saying this whole thing to him and he's like, well, I was in Dave Ramsey's mastermind group. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get sued or something. I don't know. There's some sort of, you know, <laughs> do not compete, but it was amazing. He was super excited about it. Love the name and uh, was very gracious. So yeah. I love how when every, anybody brings up Aaron, all of a sudden they have to start talking with an accent, <laughs> a big A here. Slow down. <laughs> and I don't even know what <laughs> area fun. of the country that's from, but that's my closest uh, <laughs> Southern accent I can get, but no, uh, it's been amazing. So, uh, so I'm so excited to have you on today. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Uh, before we get into today's episode, I'd love to kind of get your plugs and anything you'd like to promote. I know you're a podcaster as well, and, and you have a lot, a lot of things coming up. I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, two things. One, I'll just straight up promote here in just a second. And then the other, we we really are, Matt, what drives us out of bed in the morning is to liberate small business owners from the chaos of work in their business. It it gets us going. It's everything we think about uh, during the week. It's why Monday is our favorite day of the week, because it's the first day of the week that we get to go do that full scale full tilt, off the ledge. I mean, we just love doing it. Everything we do is driven by that one mission. And so what we decided to do a while back was we realized that we could come up with, you know, little checklists and stuff like that. And those are great in, in the appropriate context. But we really where we started, we wanted to take our very first step. And we're going to talk about this in detail today, actually. Mm -hmm. But our very first step that we worked through with every single heroic small business owner, without question, is the vision story. And so what we did is we took our full template and our full tutorial, everything. And so it's about a 20 minute in-depth tutorial, uh, video tutorial, and it's a full and complete template, nothing held back. We've put it up on uh, online. And if anybody wants to go get access to it, I will tell you up front, it's going to cost you about two to three hours of time. But if you're willing to invest two to three hours of time to literally change the legacy of your business and your family, then go to mybusinessonpurpose.com forward slash vision. It's mybusinessonpurpose.com forward slash vision. And you can get it there. You'll hear more about that during our conversation just now. Uh, but just know that that's where you can go get access to that. And you plug in your email and boom, it pops up right away, right there online. And you can get to work on that. 
Perfect. Well, we're definitely going to check that out. We'll put a link in the show notes as well, so it makes it even easier for our guests. Uh, so today, I just want to hear, you know, before we get started, kind of your backstory, kind of how where you are and where you got to today. We've been introduced by our good friends at Interview Valet, which makes my job as a podcaster way easier. This is not a commercial. This is just totally organic, and it's the truth. So if you are not using someone to help you find guests, Interview Valet dot com is the best but your backstory scott kind of how how you got to where you are today and uh love to hear uh, your story yeah now i'll echo you on that with what tom's doing over there it's amazing mm-hmm. at the interview valet so but i've got a bit of a fragmented blueprint um in what i do and so i grew up all over the united states my dad's an engineer and so we just kind of followed the work around the country ended up going to university at the university of south carolina actually totally interesting maybe for another podcast but I played one year of high school football. Uh-huh. I was, this is not self-deprecating. I was really bad, <laughs> okay. really, really unathletic and really bad. Um, but I started to learn how to snap oh. uh, like a deep snapper. Yep. So about 14, 15 yards, depending on your school and team you played for. And uh, when I went off to university, I had to lobby for a letter in high school, by the way. And that's not a lie. Wow. I had to go sit down and lobby my coach to, to, to give me a letter because I barely played. And when I got to university, it's University of South Carolina, so SEC Division One school, for those of you who are not familiar, and if you're outside of the United States, that's kind of the conference. Um, now, others will argue with me, but that's kind of, that's the premier league of, of college football. And I ended up, long story, walking on the team with that one little skill of a deep snapper and uh, ended up making the team, dressed with the team, travel with the team, and five games into the season, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, LSU, pouring down rain, 82,000 people. I literally got into the game because the first string deep snapper's shoulder came out of socket. Oh. And so it's my turn. And the first time I ever snapped a live football in a live football game was against LSU. Wow. Um, in in front of 80 some odd thousand people so it was crazy ended up getting a scholarship uh, my last two years and being the starter there uh, for that kind of quirky position and when I graduated went to seminary so I've got a theology degree oh, cool uh, on uh, that that kind of complements the undergrad I don't know how they work together but <laughs> once I finished and graduated with my theology degree I did the most logical thing that a theological student does and that's going to work for a mega multinational pharmaceutical company sure and so I went to work for Pfizer uh, for a couple of years, could not figure out in my mind, Matt, how do I integrate faith and work? And so ended up leaving Pfizer and going to work in a church as a, as a, like an associate minister, Mm -hmm. a pastor for a couple of years, ended up planning our own church. That was part of the growth strategy of that church we were part of. And so that was about five or six years in that sphere. And then I did the most logical thing a pastor would do is I left and went back to work for Pfizer. Oh, and so wow. I was back with Pfizer in, uh, in and around the Savannah, Georgia area and a little town called Bluffton, South Carolina, right outside of Hilton Head. Mm-hmm. And during that time, uh, we were uh, with the church plan. We were really starting to get involved with Nigeria and starting to take really small teams of what we call multi-domain professionals. So not professional missionaries, but mm-hmm. business owners, educators, uh, medical personnel, et cetera. And we started making inroads and building relationships with uh, now what are some dear friends in Nigeria and seeing some pretty cool work come out of it. And so about six years into Pfizer, the organization that we were working with asked if I would leave and come be the international director of this small kind of half million dollar faith-based non-governmental organization. So Hmm. when did that? And then uh, did that from about 2013 to 2015. Uh, got a first class baptism by fire into what life answering to a uh, board of directors looks like. And my position was dissolved on February 27, 2015, because of an internal board conflict. Had nothing to do with our roles or anything like that. Eight of the nine board members left that wow. day. Oh, my and gosh. Really, really sharp people. Um, not a fly by night organization. Had been around for about a decade. And eight of the nine walked. And because of that, my position got dissolved. And those guys were really gracious with me, um, said, we're so sorry. Our our hands kind of been forced. And here's what we want to do. So out of that little severance kind of landing pad, I took half of it. I hired a guy named Aaron Walker as my business coach. And that starting March 3rd, 2015 until today, we have woken up every day to liberate small business owners from their chaos. Oh, I love it. I, I just want to ask about your story really quick too. What was it like the first day that you were back at Pfizer after the church transition? 
Wow. Matt, nobody's ever asked me that question, but I will tell you, I've thought about it a lot. It was refreshing. And here's why it's really? refreshing. Okay. It, it's, it's no dig on church. It's no dig on sure. uh, uh, non-governmental work. It's no dig on any of that. But what happens is when you go into uh, kind of the for-profit, especially a global multinational world, you, you tend to miss out on the camaraderie of relational depth because of corporate mm. bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. You can find it to some extent. But then when, you, when the pendulum swings dramatically and you go from kind of that corporate nature into more of a kind of a, a looser faith-based, much smaller, obviously, setting, mm -hmm. I mean, we went from multi-billion dollar budgets to almost million dollar budgets. And so, I mean, it's a massive transition. But when you go back into that, I realize that being in the church setting for, for so long, that competitive kind of eat what you kill, that spirit, you really kind of go back and, 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 and long for that. And so that, that part of it was refreshing. Now, there was plenty that was still kind of wet blanket, not because of Pfizer, but just simply because of bureaucracy and corporate, you know, kind of life that you just have to, it just has to exist. Okay. I was just, you, you mentioned that and there's a ton in your story that I'm curious about, but we don't have time for, for more questions. <laughs> but I was like, I, I just was wondering what that would be like, because I think, you know, entrepreneurs and John Acuff talks about doing the reverse Superman where he would speak on the weekends, felt like Superman and then do the reverse Superman and go back to his day job during the week and just felt wow. like, you know, grateful for what he, for the opportunity and the job. And of course, but he just knew he was called to something different. And uh, I always thought the reverse Superman was such a sad but really brilliant analogy. So that we've wow. that I've been through, and a lot of I know of our audience has been through as well. So where you're not like kind of doing work that sets your hair on fire and just like wakes you up in, in, in a great way. So okay, well that's that is amazing. That's quite the backstory. I, there was quite a few twists and turns there that I was not expecting. That's amazing. So today uh, we're going to talk about uh, kind of a, a phrase, and and it, the phrase is this: "This is your next step, regardless of where you are at." So when we were talking earlier, we have people from all across the world. We've got people, 18, 19, 20-year-olds that are that some of them are in college and school trying to figure out what's the next step, what do I do with this degree, or how long should I stay in school, should I be in college, things like that. Do I love what I'm doing? We've got people that are working in 9 to 5 that have realized and kind of become awakened to, I think there's more than life to this. I, I think God has not wired me maybe this way. Um, not that we are ever against being a great employee and working for a company or working against that. We would never do that. But... If you are like the millions of other Americans that feel called to something bigger, that there's something that they're supposed to be doing, but they're just not doing it, they're almost dying a slow death inside of a cubicle, this is the show, this is what we want to do. So wherever you are, if you've made your first million, your first 10 million, 50 million, whatever it may be, this, this can apply to you. So this, I'm excited about today's topic. So it's just doing, this is your next step regardless of where you're at. So I'm excited to hear more about it, Scott. I had a dear friend yesterday. He gave me a new phrase that I'll, I'll share with you because I think it's really interesting. He said, Scott, we live in a low context society, a low context society. And I asked him, I said, Billy, kind of walk me through that. I don't, I don't completely understand that. And this is a guy that is a serial entrepreneur, a lifetime serial entrepreneur. He owns companies, plural, and owns them kind of more in a holding company type pattern. So these are all companies that are not just little LLCs. These are full on businesses that each have their own uh, operational president. So this guy lives kind of in a different stratosphere than I, than, than I do and, and many of us would. And so when he brought this up, I, I tend to listen to these sorts of innovative insights, especially his global perspective. And so here's what he said about a low context culture is in a low context culture, we tend to feed on the next step, systems and processes. Hey, I want to know what's step one, what's step two. Okay, you've given me a theory. Now to implement, here's step one, here's step two, here's step three. He said a high context culture, which typically lends itself to a more introspective Eastern or Middle Eastern context, is what he calls a more intuitive culture. And so in, in his specific words, you can kind of feel the air. And he's not being mystic, he's not being any of that. He's just saying when somebody says something in a high context culture, you just kind of intuitively go, okay, here's what's next. But we tend to live in a low context culture and that's not a knock. Neither are good and neither are bad. They just have their own, it's kind of like a person's personality. Personality is what it is. You've got benefits and you got downfalls. Well, a high context culture has benefits and downfalls. Low context culture, the same thing. And so let's frame our discussion within that mindset of a low context culture. And within that, 
we want to look and go, okay, uh, some of uh, some of these heroes that are listening right now are working a cubicle and then they're doing a side hustle. Some of them just went out on their own. Some of them just passed their first quarter of a million. Some passed their first half million, et cetera. And so wherever you're at, statistically, you may have written down some sort of kind of vision idea, maybe a vision paragraph, maybe something like that. But there's never been a serious, uh, more, I'm hesitant to use this word, but more academic exercise of really spelling out the detail, future snapshot of your business. And that's what I want to talk about because wherever you're at, this must be the next step if you've not already gone through it, and that is your vision story. All right, so let's let's dive in, Matt. First things first, vision is not a Peter Drucker concept. It's not a Jim Collins concept. HBR, Harvard Business Review did not come up with this. Uh, this isn't something that you just heard on an NPR podcast is brand new. Vision is ancient. And again, I'm not going to get ethereal and mystic and everything else, but vision has been around literally since the foundation of the earth. And so there are nation states today, think about this, there are nation states today that exist because of a vision that was birthed literally thousands of years ago. All you need to do is wherever you're at, get on a plane, go to Tel Aviv, and you will get off the plane in a nation state whose vision was birthed thousands of years ago. Yeah, wow. Again, whether you're religious or not, it doesn't matter. You can go somewhere in the East if you want to see another example of that. But the reality is those exist because of vision existed. And it makes the proverb very true. Where there is no vision, people scatter. And there's actually three versions of that. One is where there is no vision, people become detached, which lends itself to the second version where there's no vision, people scatter, which lends itself to the much harsher third version. That is where, where there's no vision, people die. Wow. And it's yeah. true. Yeah. So if you were on the side of a highway, Matt, and you had a horse trailer and that horse got out of the trailer, well, that horse is now detached the horse will then scatter and the horse will likely run out in the middle of the interstate and it's not going to bode well for the horse. And so vision are boundaries. Visions are not things that restrict us. Visions are boundaries that free us. And the only reason LeBron James is a great basketball player is because somebody had the vision of the boundary of a basketball court. But if nobody had ever drawn the sidelines of a basketball court, then LeBron James isn't LeBron James. He's just a great athlete. That's wow. it. Yeah. Wow, that's really good. So Matt, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It's super heady and, and like that's huge. I'm I need time to process it, but no, this is good. Let's keep going. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll so listen back we're to my go own on show. An eighteen later. minute quiet pause. No, I'm teasing. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So <laughs> vision has to be present. And here's another reason. It's a great quote. God, I hope uh, you'll see the irony in me saying this, but I hope everybody writes this down. So the quote goes like this write the vision down so those who read it may run. Hmm. Write the vision down so that those who read it may run. And by the way, that wasn't a modern author. It wasn't even a 500-year-old poet. That statement was uh, made thousands of years ago in Jewish text. Mm -hmm. So this isn't a novel concept. Write the vision down so that those who read it may run. Now, Matt, what's great about this is you've given me, as a guest on your podcast, a vision of what your podcast looks like. It's literally in written form. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. When I saw that written vision, I now had a choice. I could run towards your invitation or I could run away from your invitation. Neither are bad because if I run towards your invitation, then we get to have this conversation and hopefully it's a value. Mm -hmm. But if I decided to run away from your invitation, that tells you Scott's not a fit and it just saved you time and it saved your listeners time. Yeah. Wow. And so either way that a person runs when they hear your vision, that's okay. That's good. But the beauty of the vision is that you wrote it out in the first place. And once you write it out, as Michael Gerber says, this is a modern quote, by the way, in the book E-Myth, Michael Gerber says, if you don't write it down, you don't own it. If you don't write it down, you don't own it. So Matt, the thing I want to encourage you, everybody to do is whatever your vision is, and I'm going to give you a framework for it, write it down, open a Google doc, take out a pen and piece of paper, write this down. Because if you don't write it down, you don't own it. And then if you don't write it down, people can't run towards or away from it. I'll just take a moment of silence and let that process because that's really good <laughs> stuff. So with the vision, kind of two things. One is, what's your take on vision? When you start, to, so the person has their, their Google Doc, they have their, their notebook, they're ready to write. Do you write the vision as you see it in the next 20 years, 50 years and work backwards? Or what's your approach to that? And then a second question would be, 
how do you catch vision? Can you nurture vision? Can you like, how, how do you set yourself up to receive vision? Oh, wow. Okay. Let's start there. Let's start with your second question. Then we'll work back to your first, because this is, this is probably the most in a low context culture in a very distracted, uh, bifurcated culture. This is an important uh, question. Cal Newport has written extensively on this. If you've never read the book, Deep Work, it is an educational academic treatise. So make sure that you're, you've got some time set aside uh, for it. But even if you can just go listen to Cal Newport on a podcast or a TED talk, go listen. Okay. And what he talks about is this concept of deep work. And so I mentioned at the outset, my business on purpose.com forward slash vision, but don't go there unless you're willing to invest two to three hours. And they have to be two to three undistracted hours. They don't have to be congruent. You may do an hour here and an hour there. Mm -hmm. Don't do 15 minutes here and five minutes there. That won't work. But to have what Cal Newport calls deep work work. You have got to have a conviction that what Gary Keller says in his book, The One Thing, that multitasking is a lie. It is not true. Hmm. And so when we think about our lives, we try to multitask. We try to talk on the phone, clean the dishes, write a, you know, write a, an email all at the same time. And what we're doing is we're robbing the person we're writing the email uh, from of sincerity. We're robbing our family of clean dishes and we're robbing the person we're talking on the phone with, with a genuine, sincere conversation. And so instead of being helpful, any, you know, in three places, we're actually being harmful. I'd rather you not do any of the three and just be neutral. What Cal Newport basically is laying out is we've got to have segmented times that are distraction free, phones off. We need to put notifications in a coffin, by the way, from here on out. <laughs> put a nail in the coffin and Love put it. them in the ground. Yeah. Do oh. not let email, text notifications come through your phone or on your computer. Yeah. Well, Scott, that's not practical. It is because I've done it and other people have done it that we've coached to and it work it is so freeing to be able to do it. And so how do you find the time? You don't find the time, you make the time. So you go straight to your calendar as soon as we get done with this podcast and you, you write down on there, I'm going to take this one hour block. I'm turning my phone on airplane mode. I'm calling my wife or my husband to tell them I'm out of, I'm out of bounds at this point. Mm -hmm. Nobody can get access to me. And I'm going to sit down for one hour. I'm going to spend 20 minutes on the video tutorial and watch it. And then I'm going to begin the first couple of categories of my vision story. And I'm just going to write. So how do you catch it? You have to go put yourself in left field on the baseball field if you want to catch a baseball. Hmm, yeah. So if you good. want to catch a vision, you're going to have to put yourself in an undistracted environment with some recording document of some kind with a framework to help you walk through it. And then you just start talking and writing. That's super simple, but that's that's super helpful. Yes, simplicity is what we're going for. I love what you said about notifications. Probably this is probably the fourth time in the last week that I've considered. I wonder if I got rid of my iPhone and I just went back to a flip phone. Like, how much more work could I get done? Like, how much better of a human being could I be? <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, but I need I'm... social media. It helps fund the podcast and my life and all this stuff. But it's just yeah, yeah. It's, it's so topsy turvy. But that's so good. And I find myself being called back to the one thing being called back to the things that matter to me, you know, and it's, it's very easy for me to get busy. And a good friend of mine has a great quote where, that he talks about. We get so busy just managing the machine of life. We're just mm -hmm. managing the machine. We're pulling levers and, and, and turning knobs and turning things on and off and adjusting things and tweaking things. And it's just this big kind of social media, unimportant kind of self-fulfilled weird life that we live. And we're, are we really, being productive are we really doing you know in, in my words god's work that he's called us to do like are we mm -hmm. are we accomplishing what we're supposed to be doing on this earth and i and i believe that's you know definitely servant based are we serving others it's not just an us for no more and i'm going to try to build my my kingdom and, and my millions and things like that but it's it's serving how do we do that you know I, I know we have to serve and i know you agree with that too it's just serving others that's that's business so that is super helpful so just to get quiet to turn off the notifications to to make a, make a date in a sense, uh, for yourself where just like, you know, we have this call today and I'm not going to just like not show up. And I also have told my wife and kids like, Hey guys, I got an interview today and I'm, I'm, you know, hanging out with you. So I think people don't do that with themselves though, where they're just saying like, you know, they'll, they'll say, I'll have an hour lunch with this lady, or I have an hour lunch or two hour lunch with this guy, or we're hanging out here and doing this, or I have a business meeting with this person. And that's it. And you put on your calendar, that's it. You block it out and no one messes with it, but we don't do that for ourselves. So we just need mm. to put our names in the subject meeting today with, and, and if somebody asks like, yeah, I can't do that today. I have a meeting <laughs> and it's like, it works. It's amazing. So, okay. Talk to me more about vision. This is amazing. So we capture okay. it and we nurture it 
by just being available, being on the field. Well, and if you're listening, don't gloss over what Matt just said about setting appointments with quote fake people and it's your time it's your block of time we rob ourselves but we don't rob other people when in reality sometimes we need to rob that lunch that we have because quite frankly it's not that they're not important right but it's what we're going to sit down and talk about doesn't fit the vision now this is where the disconnect comes in well uh, scott how do i know if it fits the vision i don't know because you don't have it written down Mm. and so we've got to write this down and once you get it written down there's something else matt that you said i don't want to gloss over Mm -hmm. you said one of our priorities is to serve people one of the ways that we withhold service from people is we don't give them clarity on our vision and so when we don't give clarity on our vision now what we have the opportunity is to mislead them in thinking and 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 we start to serve them and then we get halfway through the service and in our mind we go ah oh, this doesn't feel right whereas if we would have written that down from the get go we would have never entered into that relationship because we realize it doesn't fit with our vision and so a vision is a is a is a utility tool this is not something that sits in a binder on on a bookshelf it's not a corporate speak that we put on a plaque in a paragraph this is 3 to 6 pages of detail laying out exactly where this business is going in the amount of time it's going there. And so let's talk about the seven categories. These are real simple. You can take a sheet of note paper yeah. uh, or you can use the template that I mentioned earlier that we've got up uh, online for you. So the first thing is what you alluded to, Matt, and that is the term of your vision. And so you asked, how, how do we, you know, how, how do we catch that? How far out is it? We encourage people to start with three years. Okay. Uh, at the time of this podcast, it's 2018 at the time of this recording and life is moving at warp speed as compared to 2000. Now, when this podcast is going to be listened to in 2028, God himself only knows hmm. how fast life's going to be moving at that point. Right. I have no context right. for that. Um, it's I, I, I don't know if it's floating Jetsons, cages. I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> but the reality is it will be significantly faster than it is today if more lo- Moore's Law continues to hold true. Yeah. And so we do know that. So a 10-year, 15-year, 20-year vision, it just feels so far out. And if you look at uh, historical visions, things like the Jewish leader, Nehemiah, that was a very near-term vision. So somewhere between 18 months and six years is usually kind of what we've seen historically, but three years is a great starting point to get started. So does that seem manageable, Matt, when you think about a vision within the next three years? Yeah, way easier because it's always the cliche, like, where do you see yourself in five years? I'm like, I don't even know. Like, my <laughs> life changes drastically, it seems like, every six months. So that's yeah. Un- un- unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so set a term, term of vision. Okay, so that's the first category. Number one is term. Second category is the family freedom category. Now, hold on, Scott. This is a vision for my business, I thought. Yes, exactly. And so people, uh, what they'll, th- this, this phrase, I, there's not much that grates me, honestly, Matt. I think I'm a pretty kind of fun loving guy. Likeable. I like to have a lot of fun, yeah. but this phrase just drives me in the ground. <laughs> well, Scott, it's just business. God, I want to come <laughs> out of my shoes when I hear that. I get so infuriated and here's why there is not a human being who's got any sense of emotion in their lobe, in their brain. Who, if something bad or good happens at home, doesn't bring that to work with them in some form or fashion. So true. So true. Yep. And vice versa. Yep. There's not, you know, if, if I'm working for you, Matt, and all of a sudden one day you chew me out, guess what I'm bringing home with me? I'm bringing <laughs> exactly. your butt chewing with me to home. And the first thing I'm going to talk about at dinner, because <laughs> as much discipline as I would like to have, yes. dang it, I got to have somebody to vent to. Yes. And my wife and kids are going to get the brunt of your butt chewing on me. <laughs> yep. I've and had, so, they've had good days and I come home at times at, at, in the past and been grumpy and they were having a good day until dad came home. And, uh, yeah. and I, you're, you have more control than I do. I didn't even make it to dinner. I would usually just like come in the door <laughs> within less than five Everybody minutes. sit down. Dad's got to get some stuff off my chest. Right. You guys having a good day? Okay. It's, it's about over. Here we go. Listen to my day. <laughs> yeah. So we want to write out your family, uh, a, a vision. F- and this is a shorter vision for your family. We actually have create a family vision, a course that we've created. It's called creativefamilyvision.com. You go check it out. Super cheap. And you can literally take your family through it. Our family reviews our vision about every six weeks at a really unhealthy Bojangles breakfast when we play hooky from church. Oh, I love and so it. we go there, <laughs> we have our binder. We just did it this past Sunday, as a matter of fact, and we reviewed that. But this, this kind of family section within, within the, the business vision, hey, get specific, man. Like, do you want to date your wife? 
then say it, write it in there. I want to date my wife every other week, mm -hmm. you know, in town. We want to go like, for instance, our, uh, the, the family section of our vision is I want to take Ashley on three overnights per year, just a, just a quick overnight, somewhere local. We live near Savannah, so that's easy. And we want to do that. We want to do two, uh, one international getaway per year and one local getaway per year. I'm very specific about what that looks like with your family. Um, we've got one guy, he wants to cook hot breakfast for his kids four mornings a week. He's got that in his vision. Wow, that's amazing. Be specific because the more specificity, the more people can grab it. And quite honestly, the subconscious begins to run towards that. And so it's really important. And so I called it a family freedom section. So the freedom is kind of part B of the second section here. And that freedom is, all right, in three years, Matt, as you grow this business, what are some freedom elements that you want to say? Well, let me ask you, as you grow kind of your entity, what are some personal freedom things that you would like to see come to fruition because of the growth that you've experienced? Oh, that's really good. So for me, kind of going back probably two years, um, we were able to make the jump. So from just different multiple income streams, things like that. Uh, next thing I knew, I was working a ton of hours for a great company, but a ton of hours working late nights, working from 8 a.m., 7 a.m. to 10 o'clock at night, a couple days a week being frustrated, being ticked off. Fast forward to building our businesses, things like that, that I was home 20 days a month and we still made all of our bills. We had extra money wow. and I actually got spoiled. And so now we're in a different you know, dispensation in a sense and it's great, but I, I really love that I had 20 days off a day with my wife. Kids were in school. We go out on dates, get coffee and we just strategize and dreamed. And I thought there's no way. I mean, it was really Robert Kiyosaki getting out of the rat race. So yeah. the ability to choose is the ultimate power. I think Tim Ferriss said that, and it's it's the truth. Like being able to choose that, okay, let's go grab coffee, or we need to work on this, or let's go do this, or hey, I can I can be home for dinner because I'm kind of already home, or uh, let's go let's go take the kids here or do whatever because they're off school or spring break or whatever. Just having that, I've never had that freedom before. So yeah, you know, I would say that. Wow, that's powerful. So even just kind of articulating that, I would take that and take the elements of that. Uh, I want to be able to have the freedom to go have coffee three mornings a week put that level of detail down in there. So your vision start to kind of collect these bullet points around your family and freedom. So section number one term, section number two, family and freedom. Section number three, finances. Notice it comes after the family and freedom section. And in your finance, we flip it on its head. So instead of talking total revenue, because I really don't care what your total revenue is, I'm interested in your profit. And so in your profit number, we start there how much profit do you need to generate in addition to your salary? Your salary is going to be a part of total expenses. How much profit do you need to generate to fund your family and your freedom in the next three years? And you, you can start to kind of see these things build on each other. And so if you said, hey, I, I, you know, I'm probably going to need 40 grand uh, a year in the next three years in additional profit over salary. So 40 grand plus kind of general operating expense of what we've grown on plus the other categories that we've got. It's going to equal this. So I'm going to need to generate this much revenue in order to yield that much profit. Now, your finance section is probably not complete yet because of the other sections that need to come. But it is important that you begin to understand that number. You can start to tweak it. So that's the third section, financial. Then we move into the product and service section. And now it starts to really drill down on the business and what your actual business looks like. So we're three years out because of the term. We know exactly what we want to do with our family and our freedom. We kind of have an idea of how much money we need to generate and pull out of the business to fund that. And that's charitable giving, all those sorts of things that you want to do. That should be in your family and freedom section. Now we need to identify what products and services that we currently offer and what are the products and services that we're going to need to offer to generate that kind of revenue, pull out that kind of profit to fund the family and freedom in that amount of time. And you start to lay that out in detail. The next category after that is the team, your personnel. What team are you going to need to provide that product and service to generate that kind of revenue to fund your family and freedom within the next three years? And then the last two categories are your client category. Who do you want to work with and who do you not want to work with? I want detail, bullet right. points of who do you want to work with and who do you not want to work with? Give me picture words. That's what I want to see. I want to see phrases. I want to feel and smell that person that you want to work with and the person you don't want to work with. And then finally, it's the culture piece. And the best question you can ask to define what your culture is down the road is when you look up in three years and you were to ask somebody, hey, what do you think about Entre Nido? 
their response is what you want to write down. Oh, that great. desired response is what you want to write down in that culture section. Yeah. Wow. And once you've got that, Matt, watch how this builds on each other. You've got a culture that you've built. Culture is not haphazard, by the way. Whatever ingredients you put in, if it's dissension, strife, jealousy, gossip, that's what you're going to grow out. If it's process, vision, team meetings, that's what you're going to grow out. So culture is on us individually. So once you have your culture defined, now you know who you want to work with. Now you know who you need to serve those people you want to work with. Now you know who you need to serve those people you want to work with to sell those products and services to generate the kind of revenue to fund your family and freedom within that term, which is the next three years. And there's your vision. Wow. There's so much in that that you just said. People are going to have to go back and listen to this again. Make sure you're taking notes and check out everything uh, that Scott has to offer. Like this is so much great content. Sometimes we'll have people that like have a great thought, but it's it's great and it's kind of short lived. But man, there is so much to what you just said. Even if you just took one step and just worked on that, that would be a game changer for sure. But make sure you hit all seven as well and check out everything Scott BB. Wow, this is amazing stuff. Seriously. Uh, I don't know where to go after this. This is, this is great. Like I just need time to sit and think and like rethink my life right now and, and get started working on this. So I need yeah. to turn off the notifications and I need to, uh, to do this deep work. This is, this is great. And it's funny too, because so much stuff kind of going back to just managing the machine and being busy, like busy is such an enemy and busy is so misleading. Like I've done so many things in my life where I feel like in quotes that I'm getting things done. I'm crossing off things that have a list that don't even be shouldn't even be on the list anyways that don't even matter. And so it's just challenging, like just digging deeper into your purpose and your vision and your dream. And the and the pro the problem is that a lot of people don't do this, you know, and they don't take time for themselves to invest in themselves through books, podcasts, higher learning, whatever it may be. So that's our goal kind of as Entrenito and kind of go back to your culture piece. I love that that is so brilliant and helps me with the culture question of like, okay, what do I want people to say about Entrenito? So for me, uh, I've mentioned this on the show before with other guests, but our, our vision is based on uh, Jesus's words in John 10, 10, not the first half of John 10, 10, the second half where he's, you know, the first half is the thief comes to kill, still destroy, mm -hmm. but I have come that you may have life and life more abundantly. I just see so many people in life not living an abundant life. You know, they're, they have a ton of debt. They have maybe a ton of student loan debt. They're at odds with their spouses. Uh, they, they're resenting their kids. They hate their boss. They hate their job. And they call this life. That's not life. That's, that's existing. That's surviving. That's not thriving. And it's surely mm -hmm. not the abundant life. So for my audience that may not know things about the Bible or Christianity or my background, uh, I say the word neato. <laughs> like there's a quirky word that'll stick in your brain. And uh, so how do I help people live the neato life? And that's what it is. And I love earlier what you said about how you, you get chewed out at, from your boss at home and then you come or at the office and you come and bring it home. I've done that many times. And uh, or if something's going good, I got a bonus or something like everybody's excited. So we, we say that all the time in Entree Neato that life and business is not mutually exclusive. And so it's important to be a better business owner. It's important to read the right books, to be a better person, to, to surround yourself with the right person. So... This vision, though, is so crucial. This is where everything begins, kind of going back to what you said earlier with Tel Aviv and the different city-states and the things that have been ever birthed out of anything. It starts with a vision, and that is the first key that you can see and vision in, in eyes and sight. That's all together. So you have to be able to see a different life. You have to be able to see the vision, see the future. Well, we are almost at that time. I don't want to cut you off in any way. Uh, is there any kind of closing thoughts or anything that, we, that you wanted to mention? Joe Calloway said, Matt, vision without implementation is hallucination. Wow. And you oh, mentioned wow. just a minute ago, where do I go from here? It's implementation. It's, it's, it's going, okay, that's enough. Like I've, I've got enough. That's, that's what I needed. I've got these seven categories. I've got this, my goodness, I've got this free video tutorial. I've got this, I've, that's enough. That's all I need. And now it's implementation. And you mentioned the word busy too. The very first sentence of my book says, chaos hates you and is looking to destroy you. And you mentioned that word busy. And busy is a form of chaos. And chaos, we need to start kind of personifying it because it is destroying us. And what we're doing is we're giving ourselves into that. And, you know, the, the famous phrase, oh, man, I'm constantly putting out fires. Well, stop, stop. Stop doing that. And uh, in fact, the working title of the book right now, this might change by the beginning of the year, but it's 
let your business burn. You know what? If you've got fires all over, let them burn. Let them burn because one or two things are going to happen. Either they're going to burn out of oxygen and you didn't have to do anything about them anyway, or they're going to get so hot that you're going to be forced to build a process and a system that will act as a firefighter to deal with that fire. But you have got to start stop fighting individual fires because you'll never put them out. It's whack-a-mole. You'll never put them out. And so let the business burn and you turn off the notifications, go sit down and start writing your vision story because vision without implementation is hallucination. Well, Scott, this has been, this has been great. Uh, one more time before we go, could you just share, uh, promote the book? I know it's kind of a working title right now. And you know, this is looking at the first quarter of 2019. Is that what you were thinking? That's right. Yeah. Q1 of 2019 is what we're looking at. The, uh, <laughs> the original title was Conquer Business Chaos. We may still, it's actually literally out for a vote okay. online right now. And so we're getting a lot of feedback, which has been a lot of fun. But uh, I, if you've never had Jesse Cole on your podcast, you need to have him. He owns the Savannah Bananas. He wrote a great book called Find Your Yellow Tux. And he and I were having lunch a couple of weeks ago. And he said, Scott, remember, what everybody's doing, do the opposite. By the way, he wears a yellow tux seven days a week. Just oh, so you know. my gosh. I have um, to get him on the show. We have to yeah, do a video and, for that one if he's going to get wear a yellow yeah, tux. Yeah, yeah. I'll <laughs> connect you so you can get him on there. You guys have to spend some time with Jesse. I love it. And he said, Scott, remember, anything you, or what everybody else is doing, do the opposite. I said, well, dang it, Jesse. I was frustrated. I was eating salad. I had stuff coming out of my mouth. And I said, dang it, Jesse, if I did the opposite, everybody says that their business is on fire. I would just say, let your business burn. And he goes, I love it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was like, ooh, okay. You're onto something. Yeah. So amazing. we may end up landing on that. It's probably either going to be conquer business chaos or let your business burn, one of those. And uh, regardless, we walk through the four steps of business freedom. Obviously, the very first element of that is the vision story. But it's, uh, it's for heroic small business owners who have already started in their business and they realized that they kind of, you know, they pulled the, uh, the the starter string of chaos, started getting clients coming in, they were making money. And now they're like, oh, crap, like I got to owe taxes and all this stuff. And we literally, it's a university one-on-one class for small business owners. We are so pumped about it. That is so great. Okay, great. So we will definitely, you know, uh, promote these things when the episode airs, but also when the book comes out, we'll, we'll make sure our listeners know that. Maybe we could do a quick follow-up to, to really promote the book to get as much. That'd be awesome. I want to get like a million copies from our listeners sold just from our people. So like, let's I love rally. it. Let's I love do it. it. Yes. Yeah. Hey, write that down. That's our vision, Matt. I love it. Boom. There you go. <laughs> Running it right now. Um, well, Scott, this has been great. I know we, we are at time. Um, but uh, yeah, just anywhere else people can connect with you one more time, websites, anything you want to promote. Yeah, the best place, mybusinessonpurpose.com forward slash vision. And here's why we keep pushing that. If we meet you through there, we know that you've taken action. Hmm. Um, man, it's easy to get up on Facebook and like and do all that kind of stuff. But yep. if you've gone to mybusinessonpurpose.com forward slash vision, you've taken action. And uh, man, that's what we want to see. Perfect. Well, hey, Scott, thank you so much for your time today. It's been amazing. Matt, thank you. I told you offline, this is a lot of work to put on a podcast. And I'm humbled that you would share the stage. So thank you. Thank you, sir. We so appreciate you joining us for this week's episode. As a thank you for listening to the show, head over to entreneeder.com to download your free audiobook, thanks to our friends at Audible. While on our website, you can purchase your very own official, super comfortable, super trendy, neato t-shirt. Looking to take your life and business to the next level? Click the Join Our Mastermind at the top of the screen. Have a question or comment for the show? Click contact to message us. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to our show to stay current with all the amazing interviews from our guests. Now take what you've learned, apply it, and start living your neato life now.